The Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga returns this August 16th and 17th at the historic Saratoga Racecourse in Saratoga Springs, New York. Held in the 1863 Club at the Saratoga Racecourse, the Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga is the premier national forum for industry decision makers, advocates, and patrons to discuss and analyze gaming trends in all sectors of the industry. 14 panels, over 40 speakers, all meeting for two days to examine the critical issues facing the gaming industry and share their ideas and insights. Register today at RacingAndGamingSaratoga.com to reserve your seat. And be sure and check out the website for full agenda and conference speaker list. The Saratoga Racecourse was named as one of the world's greatest sporting venues by Sports Illustrated, so don't miss out on participating in this premier event at this historic location. The Racing and Gaming Conference at Saratoga, this August 16th and 17th, at the historic Saratoga Racecourse in Saratoga Springs, New York. Register today at RacingAndGamingSaratoga.com. The Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more, and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to another edition of the Book Report, where we're going to talk about some state and national reports for uh, sports betting revenue and handle numbers. We've got legislation to talk about. Boy, do we got legislation to talk about. And a whole bunch of deals. Yeah, no, one was in the uh, news, the uh, state we're very familiar with, where we have an an actual law office in, and uh, that's Massachusetts, but I don't want to skip ahead. Well, so, no, but... we might as well just oh, jump okay. right you want into to jump it because into it? Uh, All right. everyone you know, has been talking about Massachusetts for God knows how long, and uh, you know, I think uh, at last count they had something like uh, 14, 15 bills in, in the legislative uh areas where the, it was all for sports betting, all different types of bills. And just last week, um, let me get the number right, the legislative, the House introduced HB, uh, H3974, the brand new sports betting bill that basically condenses 12 different bills into one. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't expecting them to come out with a bill that made sense in a lot of different areas to a lot of different people, especially on the House side. Well, the House has ne actually never been the problem for sports betting, as a matter of fact. Well, that's what I was going to bring up. I mean, just because it passed the House doesn't mean Massachusetts has legal sports betting now. I guess it has to move to the Senate. And when the Senate takes that up, God knows when the Senate will take that up. So it's up to the Senate to schedule it. Right now, I haven't heard anything when the schedule uh, the schedule will be on their docket to uh, debate and possibly vote on sports betting. So uh, it's still kind of up in the air. Well, let's uh, go through some of the aspects of this new bill. I don't know if you can call it a new bill. It's like a I don't even want to call it a Frankenstein bill because it's 12 different bills put together. It was a big mishmash of kind of different bills. First of all, it passed the House 156 to 3. All right. So everybody liked it, obviously, or just about everybody liked it, I should say. I wonder what the problem was for the three that voted against it. Given that there was about a half, uh, about a dozen or so bills in there, the three probably did not have their bills part of this. Uh, oh, you know, okay. you know, that might be the problem. I don't know. But well, for whatever reason, uh, three people voted no against it. But but uh, from early indications, we were talking about it has to now move on to the Senate. There yeah. are some state senators who don't like this bill, who uh, stated that they will be opposing it. I don't know how many state senators will be opposing this bill, but you know, it, it's not a unanimous slam dunk kind of bill going in. Well, when it comes to the Massachusetts Senate, that has always been the roadblock to sports betting in the state. And it's a matter of some senators want money going this place. Some senators want the money going to another place. Uh, some just don't like the idea of sports betting. And meanwhile, all the Massachusetts sports betting money is either going to New Hampshire or Rhode Island. So uh, they better get on the uh, ball pretty quick. And, you know, and soon to be Connecticut now. 
So uh, they're going to be losing money if they don't hurry up and uh, pass this bill. Well, one state that it's not going to go to is Maine because they sat on yeah, their bill yeah. and they are not even going to talk about it till the next legislative session, which is going to be uh, you know, January 5th or something. Okay. So they're not even going to talk about it uh, for sports banks. So that one's kind of dead right now. But uh, the, regarding the Massachusetts bill, they're, they're actually uh, calling for not only um, – Casinos to have it have sports betting licenses and racetracks, but they're also looking at an untethered market for online sports betting. Okay, which actually is kind of an interesting twist to this. Uh, right now, it's uh, there are going to be three different licenses: one for casinos, and each casino can have three skins. Okay, three skins are the online sports books, I should say. Uh, the racetracks can get a sports betting license, and they will be able to get a skin themselves. So now, will, uh, each racetrack will have one mobile partner, basically. Now, according to the bill that was passed in the Massachusetts House, will the racetracks be able to get an actual physical sports book on its property? According to this, they get a sports betting license to do something like that. Okay. Uh, right. I think you still got to hammer out some of these things. By the way, th this is all still speculative yeah. because the yeah. Senate hasn't had their say in it, and I'm sure this is going to change when the Senate gets their, their hands on it. So the the one thing that I found interesting, and and let's just go through a couple other things. There's going to have they're going to have betting on professional collegiate sports. Okay. Uh, no player props for college sports. Okay. Um, let's see, betting age of 21. Bets placed within Massachusetts on motor racing, esports, competitive video games, and any other event approved by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. Uh, license fees are kind of interesting. It's, uh, let's see, a $100,000 application fee, $5 million initial fee for a license, and then another $5 million to renew after five years. Uh, the first time fee uh, is uh, going to be $4 million if they pl pay a $1 million temporary sports betting fee to maintain sports betting while their license is being worked through. Okay. So it drops it down a little bit. They do. They did manage to throw in a problem ga gambling uh, aspect to the bill, which is actually really nice to see. Not a lot of states have this set out right at the very beginning. Mobile operators have to pay an annual fee of $1 million for problem gambling in the state. Yeah, well, uh, like, like I said, this is everything that passed the House. Now the Senate gets their shot at it, and they get to add, subtract, and debate, and let's see what happens. Well, uh, like I just mentioned with Maine, where the governor has always yeah. been the stumbling block, in Massachusetts, it's always the Senate. We'll see exactly what happens there. Let's move over to Illinois. Okay. Now, Illinois has sports betting, retail, online. Chicago does not. And an alderman in Chicago has now introduced an ordinance that would lift Chicago's ban on sports betting. Good, good. Uh, he's go his bill would establish parameters for the city to issue the licenses and make money from it. Uh, according to his bill, uh, uh, sports betting would be authorized at Wrigley Field, Guaranteed Rate Field, Soldier Field, the United Center, Wind Trust Arena, or in a permanent building or structure located within a five-block radius of any of those places. Great. That'd be fun. So, I, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I was kind of waiting for this to be introduced earlier, if you think about it. Sure, sure. Why, why hasn't Chicago pushed for sports betting within the city limits? Well, that, that's coming. That has to come pretty soon. So, Well, he's actually gone all the way and said you can uh, listen to this one. No more than 15 kiosks at a location unless the kiosks are also s selling food and drink. You can have more kiosks if they sell food and drink as okay. well. Okay, all right. That's an interesting little... Yeah, uh, well, okay. Uh, wagering would be prohibited from midnight to 10 a.m., Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, midnight Friday to 9 a.m. Saturday. And then 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. So they're actually placing limits on when you can place a bet. It's not twenty four seven. You know, see that's well, that's kind of tough. You know, in the um, it's kind of smart though to start off with. You can yeah. always expand it. But you you got to remember, I, I heard an interesting thing about um, college football. The most bet on college, believe it or not, is the University of Hawaii, because that's always the last game. It's like two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, after you lose your uh, games all day Saturday. 
Where, where can you make up your money? The very last game of the day, and that's usually University of Hawaii. Well, yeah, so. that's that's kind of interesting. I think, and uh, yeah, Hawaii well, is the only, is one of the few states that doesn't have sports betting yet. Well, I mean, they don't but, have any casinos but, either. But in in New Jersey and uh, Vegas, and that, that they say that's the most bet on university. Well, moving on to other states before we get out of our legislative section here, uh, Arizona and South Dakota are moving right along. They're <laughs> they have approved rules. They've uh, they're going to have final regulations posted soon. They are both on target for the beginning of football. Season. Arizona is really moving quick. Well, I mean, I mean, so I mean, is South Dakota. South yeah, Dakota is right know, there with them. But I, I, I see Arizona's in the news every week. So, uh, you know, good for them. Well, it's it's kind of nice to see states moving around. I think Connecticut's moving too. I think we're going to hear something pretty soon from the Connecticut lottery. By the time this airs, we may hear something from the Connecticut lottery I about hope who so. their sports betting partner is. Yeah, yeah, no that that should be. Uh, yeah. Well, the big one up in New England is uh, DraftKings because they have their corporate headquarters in Boston. So you know they're they're certain and, and well, they have Draft, Draft and they have, already with Foxwoods and, and they have free reign in New Hampshire. So uh, you're gonna I think you're gonna see DraftKings a lot. You know when we're we're up in Massachusetts, you know, we see a lot of commercials for well, DraftKings. Well, DraftKings is with Foxwoods. Yeah. FanDuel is with Mohegan Sun. No one knows who the Connecticut lottery is going to take. Mm-hmm. So that actually should be interesting. I mean, you you might see, you know, some uh, outlier come in. Maybe points bet. Maybe uh, bet MGM might be the logical choice. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. For, uh, and, partnering and, with the lottery. Yeah, and look, hey, William Hill's always out there too. The uh, Caesar Sports, you know, you mean. certainly. Caesar yeah. Well, Caesar Sports, but <laughs> but William Hill was. Uh, I always think of William Hill. You well, know, like I still say, San Diego Chargers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> instead I, of Caesar yeah. Sportsbook, I say William Hill. Hey, sometimes so. I catch myself saying New so, Jersey Nets. The Oakland, I'm still on the Oakland Raiders kind of thing. So, so uh, well, we'll see what happens. I'm just curious to see if they follow through with plans in Connecticut to turn the Hartford Center into a betting center. Hey, why not? Which actually would be one of the coolest things, especially in the Northeast. I just drove through Hartford, and it's a great city. So, can't wait. It's always that. under construction, though. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move over to some deals. We actually had some really interesting deals made uh, over the last couple of days here. Barstool Sports, let's start there. We're going to stay in Arizona. We just talked about Arizona for a little bit. Barstool Sports, or actually, I should say, Penn National Gaming. Oh, is this the racetrack? And NASCAR, and NASCAR right. did a deal. Uh, the uh, Barstool Sports Book will become the exclusive sports book of the Phoenix Raceway in Arizona. Uh, now, Penn National was NASCAR's first betting partner, as a matter of fact. Okay. So this was actually kind of in a, lo- a long time coming for this. It was a logical decision. It's, it's, it's a normal and natural fit, you can call it. Well, you know, it's it's always interesting to see how long some of these take, and uh, this these two have been partners for a while. You're going to see Barstool Sports on track signage. Also, Barstool will be uh, promoted through NASCAR social and digital channels, um, and then uh, in exchange, you're going to see uh, Barstool carving out NASCAR stuff, especially for the Phoenix Raceway. So we're going to start seeing a lot of different... You know, a lot of these deals are almost boilerplate now. You know, it's signage, it's data, it's, uh, you know, social media, it's broadcast. It's, 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 I wonder if, like, the gaming attorneys, you know, we should have this on, you know, just on our computer and just print it out and just change the names. You mean just fill in the blanks? Just kind fill of stuff? in the blanks. Find and replace. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to NASCAR and Barstool Sports. Uh, Joe Solovsky over there at NASCAR has been doing great work. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is NASCAR's ninth partnership for sports betting in what they call, I didn't know Arizona was the copper state. No, I did not know that. I did not know that Arizona was the copper state. Uh, Let's go over to DraftKings. The other big uh, company that's huge into sports betting is the PGA Tour. Yes, yes. And DraftKings and PGA just did a pair of deals, which is kind of interesting to announce two deals at the same time. But they are kind of related because some of the same things are going to be happening at both uh, tournaments. Uh, PGA Tour named DraftKings the first betting operator of the World Golf Championships FedEx St. Jude Invitational. Mm -hmm. Boy, what a long name that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, August 2nd to the 8th at TPC Southwind. Another another golf course that they're planning on doing uh, some uh, uh, retail stuff with. Uh, Also, they were named the official betting operator of the Northern Trust. 
which is about 10 days after the FedEx St. Jude Invitational. Okay. Uh, August 18th to the 22nd at Liberty National Golf Club. Uh, DraftKings will have hospitality suites called, I want to get the name right, the DraftKings House. Okay. At both tournaments. Uh, they're going to be like I'm, I'm, food they, and drink. Okay. Are these going uh, to be big tents they're outside have kind tents. of thing? Okay, I, I cool. You know what? I like that. I want to say tents, but I, they could be uh, actually uh, sort of temporary structures. But they're going to be having them at both uh, both events. And uh, they're going to have food and drink. They're going to have meet and greets. They're going to have uh, fan interactions, that sort of stuff there. Right, so right. it's it's going to be a really cool little addition to those tournaments. Also, what's going to happen at the, I want to get this right, at the Northern Trust. DraftKings will be hosting their Fantasy Golf World Championships at that event. That's something I don't do well in, Fantasy Golf. I seem to be really bad in Fantasy Golf. I mean, I, I, I apparently I don't read up and study enough so to do well in it. But, uh, no, I, I enjoy playing Fantasy Golf, but, you know, I, I don't win a lot of money on it. Well, you know, they're, they're going to have... I like betting on it. They're going, to have, they're going to have 40 fantasy players All right. competing for prizes of total of a total prize pool of $4 million. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it'll take Maybe place I should in start, person. I should start studying. I'm actually curious because this is an in-person t- uh, fantasy tournament. Do they have to remain there all four days of the tournament to I, I don't know participate? How these, you know, or can you fill out your card and let it go? I interviewed a lot of fantasy experts and things like that, and they were all taking part in these, uh, you know, these tournaments and you know it, it's they're there on site but you're not not there all the time and on like on in the actual room of it but uh i don't i don't know how they're all set up like that top prize the number one fantasy golf player is one will win one million dollars wow Boy. at this uh tournament but it's a it's a total uh, player pool of 40 40 players competing for four million dollars in prizes Fantasy is tough because, you know, you're competing with a lot of, I don't want to call them professional fantasy players, but I guess they are professional fantasy players. They have some of the most sophisticated software to help them out in these things. So, uh, you know, if if you don't have that kind of thing and if you don't have the kind of time that you need to research all this, I mean, that, that it's a really difficult task doing well in fantasy. So basically you're saying uh, they're either playing fantasy or launching a rocket. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of work to do fantasy, you know. Well, it's it's a lot tougher than people think. Yeah, if, oh, you, if absolutely. you've never played yeah. fantasy, it yeah. is a lot tougher. And you yeah, know, that, I'm not saying anything new here. That's why I'm in awe of these top fantasy players. I mean, they do really well. They do really well on a consistent basis, which is even more difficult to do. So good for them. Let's uh, let's head back over to Arizona for a second. We have PointsBet. PointsBet just did a deal with the Cliff Castle Casino Hotel in Arizona. To do uh, to, to work together with the uh, Yavapai Apache Nation to get a sports betting license for online. Is it sports Yavapai betting. or Yavape? It could be. I always say Yavape. Way. I mean, I see that P A I, and I want to say Pi. Oh, okay. I say Pay Yavape. So uh, it's a Native American tribe. It's actually a very nice uh, casino out there okay uh, i took a look at their website and uh, i've never been there myself but uh, it's, it's actually a very beautiful place and uh, this is now marks the 16th state for points bet yeah uh, I, re- I remember when they launched in new jersey was that their first state that was one of the that was yes was, that was their first yeah, state yeah, and so also well. it's their very first state to launch an online casino they just oh, announced okay. that as well All so right. new, oh, Jer- yeah, that, new jersey's they, like their proving ground yeah they have an online casino now that went live good for them and we have also another deal. We have IGT. Now, IGT to, provides that play sports platform. It's, a t- it's the technology running the sports books. IGT just announced that they did a deal with the Ute Mountain Casino Hotel where that casino will have the IGT play sports powering their sports books. Okay. Uh, this is now... I, listen to this. IGT Play Sports is now currently powering more than 40 gaming outlets across the United States. Wow. So, uh, you know, when I think of IGT, I mean, I guess they made their name in slot machines, right? Yes. I think of slot machines when I think of IGT. And also, they're involved in lottery in a lot of places. So, you know, it's it's amazing what they're doing in the sports betting field. Well, they are now in Colorado powering that. And uh, let's talk one last big deal. 
Sport Radar and Bally's Interactive. Okay. Five year partnership. Uh, Sport Radar will provide Bally's Interactive with access to its complete pre match betting services, live betting services, content solutions. Basically, it's going to allow Bally, Bally's Interactive and Bally Bet to offer even more secure transactions, better options, more up to date options okay, in good. terms of in play betting. And uh, so uh, another big deal for that. And also racing, horse racing. Let's uh, William Hill. William, Hill, Let's hit this last one, then we'll talk about some numbers too. William Hill became the title sponsor of the inaugural racing league. Okay. It's the United Kingdom's horse racing industry's first team-based competition. Wow, team-based competition. Okay. Team-based horse racing. How is this working? Is this like a NASCAR thing where the different NASCAR teams – Kind of have several cars, or is a team going to have several horses? Kind That's of thing? exactly what it's All going right, to be. Okay. The racing league will feature 12 teams riding in 36 handicap races over six weeks. Okay. So William Hill has secured the title sponsorship for the brand new racing league. So this is in the UK, right? This is in the UK. It includes the competitions. Uh, let's see, at Newcastle, Doncaster, Lingfield Park, and Royal Windsor. So some of the Big, big uh, racing uh, venues are going to have William Hill signage. Uh, you're going to see William Hill promos, that sort of uh, situations over in the UK. You know, it's, it's basically the same stuff that you see in the United States now with title sponsorships. Uh -huh. But the fact that they're doing team-based horse racing, I'm actually curious to see how well this works. I've never heard of team-based horse racing. Well, yeah, it, I, like I, I compared it to NASCAR. I wonder if they're going to follow that model. If they follow that model, I think it'll do very well. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, one launch I want to talk about real quick, uh, and it's not really a launch launch. It's a uh, actually Michigan added to their approved sports betting list, and I thought it was interesting what they added. Uh, they now are permitting sports betting on the Olympics, and everybody is. Okay. Uh, and also, they did the hot dog eating contest. Okay. I won money on that, by the way. They now have, they're now permitting sports betting on the American Ultimate Disc League. Frisbee football, basically. Okay, frisbee football. I, I think I, we, we talked about this either last week or the week before. You know, during the pandemic, I was watching every sport imaginable, and uh, one of those sports was almost like frisbee golf. You know, they had a they that, had discs. That's called, that's called disc golf. Okay, it's called disc golf. That's why. Okay, this is something completely different. This is this is. By football. the way, I, I was captivated by disc golf this or is, whatever it's this called. This is frisbee yeah. football. Okay, All right. and actually, I, I've actually seen this on TV, and it's it's actually kind of fun to watch. I, it's probably really interesting to play. Is it like a flag football kind of thing? It's, it's it's like flag and tag football. Is it tackle? It, it, no, no, no tackle. <laughs> no, no tackle. No tackle. Okay. So. Uh, that would actually be very yeah, interesting right. to watch. Now that you bring that up. Uh, also, drone racing. You can now. Uh, okay. They're going to. They're allowing uh, drone racing betting in Michigan. I've seen that on TV. The the one thing that's still pending is the American Cornhole League. Oh man, I, you you have to have cornhole. We we interviewed Stacy uh, Moore. Stacy Moore, yeah, from the American Cornhole Association. Yes, and uh, they did a deal with well, no, the American Cornhole League. American Cornhole League. He's yeah. the commissioner. He's the commissioner. I, I, I did a. Uh, he, they did a deal with DraftKings. Which was an absolutely amazing deal. So, um, you know, cornhole is an up-and-coming sport. It's, it's fun to watch on TV, by the way. Well, I actually loved, you know, as soon as we had them on the, uh, the, the American Cornhole League, I started watching it on TV, and I started seeing DraftKings everywhere, everywhere, yeah, it, everywhere. It, it, and also, they, their first live event was held in one of the, in the I think it was the South Point in, in Las Vegas. I don't know, but it's, a, it's fun to watch, I'll tell you that. It's it's actually a really cool sport. Once you put it on, you can't take it off. You know, you you, you see uh, the first couple of throws, and you want to find out what happens at the end there. So uh, no, it's a fun sport to watch. A couple of news and notes on some of the sports betting numbers before we get out of here for the week. Uh, Virginia Lottery provided their second sports betting update since their launch. You know, this is an overall outlook picture. All right, they haven't reported their numbers for June yet. Supposedly they're going to be doing that around August first. So. Um, the big numbers that came out of there was the top sports book in Virginia is FanDuel with almost 50% of the market. Wow. DraftKings had 25%. BetMGM came in third with 16%. So, uh, but, you know, it kind of makes sense because FanDuel and DraftKings are 
the two longest running books sure, sure. in the in the Commonwealth there. So, uh, but Fanduel fifty percent of the market that is just an amazing number. It's impressive. Uh, Pennsylvania they actually since launch have now taken $8.1 billion in online and retail handle. Well, it's a huge state with big cities. Only two states have taken more since that the time since Pennsylvania has launched, and that's New Jersey and Nevada. So they're right there. They're up there. I think you're going to probably see Michigan coming up pretty quick. Sure, uh, sure. The way Virginia's moving. Yeah. You know, kind of interesting to see them move. Uh, Washington, D.C., real quick. The only reason I'm bringing up Washington, D.C.'s numbers, it was the first month for BetMGM. Okay. That MGM launched in June. Uh, online handle fifteen point seven million from William Hill, three hundred seventy six thousand from Bet MGM. So uh, kind of, that's the non Gambet numbers. Gambet's the one run by the uh, Washington D.C. numbers, the Washington D.C. lottery. They always separate out the non Gambet from the Gambet numbers. Okay. So, but uh, they actually uh, June sports betting handle was up forty two percent from the pre uh, from. Uh, from the previous month, that's in June, nineteen point five million compared to thirteen point eight million. So uh, they're actually moving in the right direction. And um, let's see, over in Michigan, online sportsbook handle was two hundred thirty-five million in June, down just a percent from May. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know everything's moving along in their uh, their uh, state. There, they're actually getting um, live dealers now. They just announced live dealers yeah. coming to Michigan for their online casinos. For the yeah, online no, casino that's side, big of in New Jersey, I'll tell you that live. De- everyone loves the live dealers. And uh, we mentioned New Hampshire at the top of the segment here. Uh, handle for June in New Hampshire was thirty nine point three million, down seven percent from May. The notable thing there is it's their third straight month of declining handle. Now I think that's more a sports betting calendar. That's summer months, yeah. You that's know, the one, calendar once up there. football starts, they'll be uh, their beloved and, Patriots. And, and you let me tell you something. And uh, you know, the Red Sox are doing well when the MLB playoff situation heats up. I think they'll be uh, those numbers are going to go way high. Well, that's it for this week's book report. Uh, if you have any news or notes, feel free to send them over to us, info at turnpikesportsradio dot com, and we'll include them on the next episode of the book report and that'll do for us this week we'll see you next time on the turnpike